Time to go. Oh. Oh, that was weird. Right, dependencies. Sometimes when you haven't worked on a project for a long time, the dependencies that your project relies on become out of date. Unfortunately, it is something that is put off for a long time because it seems like a tedious thing to do. But there's good reasons for actually keeping your dependencies up to date. There are bug fixes, there are new features, there are performance improvements, and most importantly, there are patched vulnerabilities. What's the easiest way to tell if your packages are out of date? Well, it's something called NPM out. Dated. Here I am back in the Cradian UI project, which I haven't touched since the last time I made a video. So this will be interesting. Run the command npm out, short for outdated. Now, luckily I don't have that many dependencies, but it shows clearly which ones here are out of date. And for a few of them, you can actually see that they're a major revision behind. So the next command that you should run is called npm update or npm up for short. NPM up will update all the packages listed to the latest version. And of course, this respects the Semver constraints of both your package and its dependencies. Now, what that means is if you have a caret in front of your version, it will only upgrade to the latest minor or patch version. So even if there's a version two out, it will only upgrade to 1.2.2 if that is the latest one that is below the, in the version two. If you have a tilde in front of it, it will only upgrade it to the latest patch version. So I've run NPM up, I, it's added three packages Packages, removed six packages, changed 79 packages, and audited 692 packages in 23 seconds. Wow, so fast. <laughs> One thing to note here is we have 20 vulnerabilities, 15 of them are high. Whoa. If there is any doubt, you can look at the diff of your package lock file, and you can see all those lovely dependencies that were updated. Before we run npm audit fix, I'm going to look at npm outdated again. So this time we only have four that are outdated and you can see that all the ones that are outdated are ones where we have a major revision difference. It may be tempting to just go and update all the major versions and then say, all right, done. And a lot of times it'll work fine. But the real pro move is to actually look at the change logs of all of those major revisions. Because usually when there is a major revision, it means that there has been a breaking change and making sure that those breaking changes don't apply to your own project is actually really important. This TypeScript ESLint package is probably dependent on this ESLint change. So I'm gonna first look at ESLint. Because it's the major revision that usually has the breaking change, we wanna look for the change log that corresponds to this major version change. Sometimes they have the change log somewhere in the readme file, but more often you'll find that it's actually in the GitHub repo. Either a changelog.markdown file, or if you also go to the releases section, you can also see the changes there. So looking at the changelog markdown file, it's a little bit less readable than in the releases section, but I think the content is the same, but for visual purposes, I'm going to look at the releases section. All right, so in version eight, there's just two, oh, there's a whole stack there. Okay, so let's take a look at them again. So disallow reserved words in ES3 fixes. First one is this, second one is that, and then we have a whole bunch here. Just quickly read through it and see if any of them mean anything to you. The thing is with ESLint is that we're not really depending directly on ESLint. We're actually depending on other packages. If you look at our ESLint.json file, you can see that we're not really adding our own rules. So looking at the breaking changes of ESLint is not exactly the most important thing for us. However, what is important is if we look at our the things that depend on ESLint. So with this TypeScript ESLint releases, I have to go all the way back to version five, which is right here. So you can see that the all packages support for ESLint version eight. Perfect. Now we can quickly double check into the other repository. Oh, it's, oh, <laughs> these two packages are actually from the same library. And the releases says that it supports ESLint version eight. Perfect. So we know we can safely up update all three of these things. Lastly, let's just quickly check semantic release. Aha, so with semantic release version 19, the breaking change is that they're dropping support for node version 15. Now I know my GitHub action requires node, so I'm just double checking to make sure that my node version is not lower than 15. And it's in this case, it's 16. So we're good to go. Oh, hold on a sec. One thing I did notice is that I'm actually jumping two versions. 
So I should look at version 18 to see what breaking changes. Oh nice, okay, they just updated the minimum required version again. So I'm okay with that case as well. Now, because my project is so simple and straightforward, I don't have many places where I could be run into problems with dependencies. But for much larger projects, that might not be the case because you are using way more features or you have a much more complicated dependency tree and it makes it more difficult to go and up update these dependencies. It's just a part of software development using packages that you need to take into consideration that we have all of these dependencies and by not upgrading them, we're accumulating technical debt. So after updating my dependencies, I went from 20 vulnerabilities to 14. So let's run NPM audit fix. Still at 14. <laughs> Even though running NPM audit fix, I still have 14 vulnerabilities. But you know what? <laughs> Depending on how sensitive your project is, you might want to have a look at each one of these vulnerabilities and make sure that they're not actually things that impact your project. There are other ways of keeping your, your project dependencies up to date. And if your project is stored on GitHub, that is Dependabot. Dependabot is this thing that GitHub created to help projects keep their dependencies up to date. First thing you need to do is to go to your project and then go to your settings, then go to security and analysis, and then enable everything in this. Sometimes you won't be able to enable some of these things because you have a private repository, but if you have a public repository, you should be able to enable everything. Now, even though I've enabled everything, I still haven't received any pull requests telling me that I need to update some of my dependencies. And this is because I need to configure Dependabot to, to actually create these pull requests. And this is done by creating a dependabot.yml file inside of your repository's GitHub directory. I already created a GitHub directory for my GitHub actions, but instead of going inside the workflows folder, it'll go straight into the GitHub folder. So I'm gonna make a new file called dependabot.yml. Nice, I got an icon already for it. Inside GitHub Docs, I actually see this sample dependabot file. So I'm just gonna grab this one that relates directly to NPM and not Docker, because I'm not using Docker in this project. There we go. Now, one thing I'm gonna do to make sure this works properly is I'm gonna look at some of my dependencies and actually roll them back. So for this example, I'm gonna roll semantic release back to 17.4.7 and run npm install one more time just so we can get package json all synced up looking at the dependabot documentation i have everything that is required but let's take a look at what else we have in here Ooh, commit message Ooh, assignees hmm i wonder what the open pull request limit is ah versioning strategy ah okay by default it's a maximum of five pull requests and then 10 for security updates which is an addition to the five pull requests all right, let's see if this works. What? For some reason, it's not being detected. Maybe I need to wait a day in order to see if this works. And look, we got a new pull request. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Oh, so nice. We got some commands. And I'm gonna squash and merge. Boom. And there we go. That's how easy it is to keep all your dependencies up to date. It does take a little bit of effort and it can be tedious at times, but keeping your dependencies up to date is actually really important.